Until the mid-1990s, Peru was the number one producer of coca in the world. Today, several thousand former illegal coca farmers, cocaleros, cultivate anything from cacao and coffee to palm trees for oil and palm heart. Hector Ore is one of them. Senor Ore used to grow coca in the infamous Andean region of San Martín. I was working for a company and would produce weekly probably about 1,500 kilos of cocaine base. Sometimes we would fill up four or five flights headed for Colombia and then Europe. A lucrative but dangerous lifestyle. Hector feared for the safety of his children. So he and his wife decided to leave everything behind and move here to Pucalpa in the Peruvian Amazon. They came across a palm oil project run by the United Nations Drugs and Crime Office, helping former cocaleros to start legal businesses. Here we implemented the first project with palm, starting with 270 poor families that have migrated from different areas known to have been working with coca. Jochen Visa, a UN technical advisor for alternative development with the Office of Project Services and Office on Drugs and Crime. We organized them, giving them the respective materials, technical assistance, and made sure everyone started with five hectares of palm. Because palm trees take three to four years before the first harvest, it takes a lot of dedication and perseverance on the part of the farmer. For Hector, it took 16 years. Today, he owns more than 22 hectares of palm trees, and is a shareholder in this palm oil processing plant here in Neshuya. To me, being the owner of this factory is a great honor. This is the future of my whole family, my children, my grandchildren, and my whole generation. Neshuya, an hour's drive from Bucalpa, was once known for its high crime rate. Now it's an area of opportunity and development. Farmers are shareholders in corporations like Olamsa and collect dividends. They can even ask for a loan. This check is financial support I'm asking for, from Olamsa. I have a family problem and I need the money. Running a legal business has enabled Hector to open his first bank account. To all farmers involved with coca, I say, change to palma. With palm trees, you are always clean and proud. You won't be afraid of justice chasing you. An opinion shared by about 15,000 other former cocaleros in Peru who've moved on to alternative crops. These are largely determined by the soil and the altitude of any given area. Long term, palm oil holds the highest promise here. At the moment, Peru imports most of its vegetable oils and the demand keeps growing from industries such as food, cosmetics, detergents and alternative energy. General manager of the Alamsa palm oil processing plant, Jorge Vigo Maldonado. We can also have a biodiesel plant with a production of 12,500 tons per year. From palm oil processing plants like this one in Chambillo, the crude oil is taken to refineries like Alpamayo in Lima, where it goes through a complex refining process and is finally packed as vegetable shortening. General manager of Alpamayo, Bert Engelhardt. We receive crude palm oil from Pucalpa, from Peru, and we transform it uh, to final products, which are shortenings for different industries and from bakeries. Palm oil is also used as a nutritious additive for animal feed, so the market for palm oil is clearly there, but the ultimate goal is to find alternatives that work and can be sustained in the long term. In partnership with Peru's government, 
the United Nations Drugs and Crime Office is working to do just that. The alternatives that are being provided, they're not provided by chance, they're provided after careful analysis. And this all entails that the choices that are being provided are viable choices. They're choices based on what the market requires. Flavio Mirela, the representative of the UN Office on Drugs and Crime in Peru. What we're trying to do uh, to support government is to build up the communities. The question here is not for them to pick up and go elsewhere. This is a project in which everyone wins, including the environment. Because sustainable crops tie the farmers to their land, they also bring an end to the notorious slash-and-burn approach to planting cocoa used by migratory cocoa farmers.